There's five dimensional demons that are good. They're coming to your child. Okay. Buy my brain pills. Hillary Clinton, you're not going to take my child. This is like a war between the forces of pain and guilt and submission and terror versus play and creativity and thoughtfulness and respect and love and self-awareness and growth and freedom. You get lack of facial expression. We got this kid tonight. He was out there. He's making this up face. It's like this. He thinks he's smiling. He literally believes he's smiling. He kind of looks like Jonathan Bernthal, you know, from The Punisher. I'm like, you are The Punisher. The punishment is when they have to listen to you. <laughs> you're laughing, but you're, do you're probably doing it. Many of you are probably doing it. Because I, I, I can assure you, this guy doesn't think he's doing that. I told him, you're doing this. This is what it looks like. He's like, oh my God, is that what it looks like? I'm like, yes, I'm not lying to you. I'm your friend. I'm your coach. I'm your friend. I'm here to help you. I might say, say harsh things at times. Because I care, I care about this. I care about this maybe more than you do, weirdly enough, you know, which is crazy to think, but <clears throat> he doesn't know he's doing it. So a big part, of, like when I say awareness, a big part of all this is number one, becoming experientially aware of the gap between what you believe you're projecting to other people and what is being perceived. Once you become experientially aware of that gap, you can take steps to close it. How do you do that? Well, you first have to investigate what's inhibiting the flow of energy. What's inhibiting that flow? So you want to develop a total exercise process for your total instrument. That starts with understanding the various parts that contribute to the gestalt that is your communication. And then seeing where the weaknesses lie through diagnostic exercises that put additional demands upon each of these areas. And then strengthening them and then putting them back together in a more completely realized whole. Full spectrum communication, full spectrum. Again, a full spectrum communicator is somebody who is aware of and able to exercise energy expression on a wide range of, of spectrums from, again, physical, vocal, emotional, mental, spiritual. Whew. Good evening, right? Good evening. Supposed to, what's up? I can't even do the what's up. If I try, they, they, they think I'm kidding. You know what I mean? Because they know I'm not, they know I'm not treading water. They're, they're like, because most people, when they go to what's up, what are you doing? What are you living? I hope the questions don't run out. What do you do? Where do you live? What, what do you do? They're, they're, they're like desperate. They're desperate. They, they, as soon as the questions run out, they know they're done. But again, we could go up and be like, oh, so what do you do? Besides be incredibly hot. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't get out much. I'm uh, a bit of a shut-in. But uh, yeah, anyway, so da, da, da. like, again, there's like, a, there's an aliveness. There's, there's an engagement. I'm interested. I'm engaged. I'm anticipating. I'm thinking about what's being said in my mind's eye. There, there, there's, a, there, there's some sort of, there's a, there's a, a clarity. There's a lens between the inner and outer. My mind is not a, it's not a barrier. It's a bridge between the inner and outer. I'm a conduit for these energies. I'm a conduit. I'm a channel. I don't even come up with this shit. I don't, where's the, I don't, I don't know. It seems like these ideas just sort of are floating around and they sort of land on me. And I say, them. you know, again, Keats said, beauty is truth, truth, beauty. There's a certain sense of symmetry when you say these things that seems right. You know what I mean? Again, the Rig Veda, the, the Hindu text said, knowledge is structured in consciousness. I trust my faculties. I trust myself. The things I say, I, I believe have value intrinsically. Some people are gonna like it. And guess what? Some people ain't. Understand you're for some, you're not for others. And be okay with that. Be okay with that. I'm not trying to find 10 people that think I'm sort of okay. I'm trying to find the one that thinks I'm, I'm great. Dude, this guy's great. I love this guy. He's, he's fun. I enjoy, I enjoy being with him. It's like, it's like, yay, I enjoy being with you too. Let's do it. Like, and, I'm, and honestly, it goes both ways. I'm looking for someone that I enjoy being with. And so, again, like, I don't just go around talking to everyone like, ha, 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 pussy, 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 pussy. Reframing negative emotions. Um, 
what is an emotion? I mean, we talked about this before. What, what is an emotion? What makes an emotion its own separate category? What, what about these mental states makes them unique that we put them in a basket together called emotions? A felt affect. Yeah, well, I mean, they're, they're subconscious biological processes that we experience. There's something, they're things that happen to us, right? They are not things that we will to happen. They can overwhelm the cognitive working space. They can overwhelm the cortex and kind of hijack the RAS so you're unable to even process information that would be contradictory to that state. Like you're afraid, you're like, I know I shouldn't be afraid. Like again, in a, in a social approach a situation, for example, but your brain's like, nope, nope, don't do it. Nope, 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 nope. Even though you're, you're saying, no, no, there's no need for this. Nothing bad's gonna happen. It's like, nope, no, 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 Stay there, stay there, stay there. What's up? Leave. I mean, we can set up, we can, we can arrange for the stimuli to be present to give us the emotions we want, like going to the movies or taking drugs or, or eating a meal that we like or you know, having a meeting with our friend. But, but again, generally there are things that happen to us. So I think that, in, and again, <clears throat> Paul Ekman's book, Emotions Revealed, seminal book on, on the work, he basically talks about for, developing four skills. Number one, becoming more consciously aware of when we are becoming emotional. And then this gives you a modicum of control over how much you allow it. Because look, emotional, emotional episodes serve purposes, but in the best case scenario, they don't do harm to us or other people as a result. You know, like I, for me, for example, I suffer from like uh, rage attacks where I become extremely angry about things. Although Hunter S. Thompson said, if you're not angry, if you're not angry enough to smash plate glass windows, you're probably too fucking stupid to be helped. If you look around at the world these days, Zach De La Rocha said, anger's a gift. Rage against the machine. But, but you know, those things can very often cause me to have uh, disproportionate responses and, and then have to apologize later. So, so again, I've learned to identify when I'm going into that state and then try to cool those hot triggers off. So number one, identify when you're becoming emotional. Number two, learn to cool the hot triggers off. Number three, conversely, learn how to identify emotional episodes in other people or emotional feelings in other people. Again, this is where I think is a lot of people are lacking in this area. They have zero attunement to other people's subjective emotional experience. Why? Because they're so wrapped up in monitoring what they're saying and what they're doing that they cannot, there's no, there's no RAM, there's no RAM to, to monitor the, the other person's emotional response. Like, what do, what do I say? What do I do? And, and then they're in the weeds. They're fucking in the weeds. They can't, they can't handle that, right? So, but here's an interesting thing. As you train your objective modes, the face, the voice, the body, you're also simultaneously training your perceptual the corresponding perceptual modes. So again, the projective modes form a system, the corresponding perceptual modes form a system, and the interplay between those two forms a larger overarching system. So when you train one, you train the other. So the, the more you, you train this stuff and go out and, and again, there's a big difference between exercise and performance. You know, you can train these things in isolation, you can work, you can do acting type work, you can do voice work, you can do you know, various things to improve your body language and gesture and posture and things like that. But then of course, you've got to perform. And when I say perform, I mean, have actual interactions. And I think that's a, I think that's a valid analogy, because there's definitely a sense of performance when you meet someone for the first time, you know, they're like, okay, what, you know, so, so as you train those, per, the projective modes, you're training the corresponding perceptual modes, and you get this emotional acuity, where you can sense tiny shifts in what the other person is feeling, and you can modulate your tone accordingly to kind of ride the wave. You can kind of, you know, do a self, you go a little too far, you can do a little self-deprecating facial expression and kind of, you know, apologize in a jokey way, plow it under, you know, things of that nature. And, and then, so again, so number one, become aware of your, when you're becoming emotional. Number two, start to cool off the hot trigger so you're not in that grip of it as much. Number three, become aware of what other people are giving you emotionally. And then number four, understand what to do with that information. And of course, that's going to be contingent upon the context, the relationship you have with that person, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, I, I think, you know, look, the emotional process, it's simply one of, of many subconscious processes that influence our behavior. 
again, your, your intellect or your mind or your, your cognition, it basically serves, a, it, the function it serves is to take various subconscious processes and sort of tie them in a bow and, and, and get, like, like think about this. Very often we become emotional without even being, becoming intellectually aware of it, right? So it does not need the intellect, it, it just kind of happens. And then in my intellect might become aware of it later, right? So again, it's, it's the result of a subconscious process rising up to the surface and then us becoming aware of that intellectually. So there's a lot of these different processes. So it stands to reason that a lot of the shit we do, our behaviors, we're not even aware of them. We do them for no reason whatsoever, for no intellectually thought out reason whatsoever. Half of the shit you do, you don't even know where the fuck you do it, right? And so the mind, it tries to wrap this up in a bow and like give you a sense of self, give you a coherent sense of self based on these behaviors and your history and what you think of as your personality. And again, the context of the situation, it's like, this is me. Right. So, you know, again, it's very, most of us look in the mirror like, OK, there I am. I'm Jeff. I'm, I'm this unit, this person, this individual unit. But again, there's a lot of shit going on under the surface you're, you're not even aware of. So, again, through introspection, we can become aware of a lot of a lot, or at least aware of the functioning of the intellect. We can increase the amount of time it spends in useful and productive activity as opposed to being this fucking judgmental hindrance. Now, here's the other thing. This. Uh, Consciousness is strangely arbitrary, right? The distribution of consciousness is strangely arbitrary. Like some things we pay attention to, some things we don't. And I think a good analogy for it is our vision. Like looking forward, you have a small area of distinct focus. Out here, there's an increasingly fuzzy area. Like do it right now, put your finger out and like see, see how far, put your finger out here. Now try to focus on your finger without bringing it into focus. Now this is hard, it's hard to focus on things in your periphery. Because generally, once you focus on them, you, they tend to come into focus. So in your mind, you can do it with great effort, right? So in your, in your consciousness, there's a similar, it's, it's kind of an analogous thing going on. So there's all these other things happening in the periphery of your consciousness that you can't really notice. Because generally, once you notice, once you notice them, then they become fo focused. So you want to sort of attempt to study these sort of like more peripheral consciousness activities, I guess you might say, to understand how it's affecting you, especially when you're out trying to communicate. Because again, look at these guys, look at these fucking dudes. They're out there and they're trying to, they're trying to do all the shit. And then there's like, they're still doing the same repetitive behaviors, almost as though they're being controlled by some sort of outside force. They intellectually are aware that they should be doing X, Y, Z, but they just can't do it. Or they're stuck in, in, in this and that and the next thing. Right, so we, again, through, you know, how do you, how do you become aware of peripheral consciousness? Anyone wanna hazard a guess? There's a lot of smart people in here. Bingo, meditation. Meditation has been shown to increase many indices of high mental functioning, right? It gives you sort of a more coherent nervous system where you can apprehend intuition better, you can, you become more aware of how, how thoughts arise and fall in your mind. Here's an exercise tonight when you're going to sleep, when you're in that sort of place between wakefulness and sleep and you're falling asleep, try to kind of look at how your thoughts rise and fall. What do they focus on? Like what do they, what is the structure of those things? And of course, you could do this with meditation too. I mean, that's how the point of meditation is like watching the process, watching the, con the stream of consciousness, like, you know, give you these fucking things to consider and, and these solutions to problems and things like that. Oh, tomorrow I got to send that thing to the DMV. Oh, I guess I got to go talk to the thing. I better call so-and-so tomorrow, you know? And, and so you can kind of, and a lot of it is like solutions, but a lot of it is also worries, things like that. So you want to really like de develop your art of thought, so to speak. So, so again, you're, you're increasing the amount of time that it spends in supportive activity as opposed to being this fucking judgmental hindrance. For those of you in here who are serious about this shit, I am doing boot camps all for the next year. I just put a new schedule up. I'm going to Las Vegas, San Diego, Los Angeles, Chicago, 
San Francisco, Atlanta, Denver, Dallas, Seattle, back to Las Vegas, back here. Um, shit, New Orleans, I'm gonna be doing a five day Mardi Gras boot camp, which would be a total shit show. I did get roofied in Mardi Gras once. You ever, anyone ever here ever been roofied? One guy, two guys. It sucks, dude. It's not good. I was talking to this girl at uh, Lafitte's Blacksmith Shop on Bourbon, and she's like, oh, hey, nice talking to you. I got to go. My friends are leaving, um, but hey, this guy just bought me this, this drink. Do you want it? I'm like, what is it? She's like, gin and tonic. I'm like, oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, hey, have, have a great night. Like, fuck, dude. Like, honestly, I don't remember a single thing about it. I, 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 like, vague images and shit. My friends, like, took me back to the place, and the next day, I felt, like, terrible. Like, so, like, the worst hangover conceivable, and I didn't remember a single thing. But, like, you were saying things, and they sort of made sense, but you clearly were not present. So, that night, I saved a, a young woman from a, a fate worse than death, and uh, called the roofie. And uh, I'll tell you what, you all better be careful about that shit. But anyway, if you want to join me on, at Mardi Gras, <laughs> 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 you know, I bring these weird accoutrements. We're going to have like laser swords. I give everyone laser swords. It's awesome. Yeah, we're like, <laughs> so you can find each other in the crowd. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that one. I love that one. But on these programs, like I said, man, like I, I, like I like there to be, I don't want people leaving the program not understanding what to do. Like you're gonna understand what to do. When you leave that program, you're gonna understand precisely what to do when you're in the moment. You're gonna be like, okay, I'm in stage two. Let's get to stage three. But of, of course, so much of this is contingent upon you actually performing the repetitions. So I, very often I say to guys on bootcamp, I'm like, look, yo, what you're, you're not doing what we agreed upon. Like I, I said, let try this tonight. You said, yes, I'm gonna try this. And you're not, you're simply not doing it. Why? Well, I know why the negative social conditioning, but it's essentially like if they went to a personal trainer and the personal trainer is like, all right, let me show you how to do a dumbbell curl. You understand? Okay, now you do it. And then the guy goes like this. Why, why, are you, why are you yelling at me? I'm doing it. Like, no, you're not doing it. Do it. You have to perform the repetitions. You have to perform the repetitions. So I, I, again, if you, if you do that, you're going to have success. Just this afternoon, I had a student meet someone and, and form a, a love connection, which involved them performing, I guess, what might be described as the lambada in the middle of the fucking unbelievable. Um, it was quite lewd and vulgar, whatever was transpiring. And then, I, then they proceeded to leave in one of these pedicabs together. And then he showed up a couple hours later like this. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> it's real. <laughs> he's like glowing I guess they call it glowing <laughs> I'm like damn and see when that happens I, when I saw by the way when I saw you leaving dude I was like I was like I'm like delighted I'm like sitting there like I'm like 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 literally I'm fucking delighted because it's like I got success by proxy you know like the movie Avatar I go into your blue alien dick and control it remotely and 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 if you and if you have success, I get success as well. Your success is my success. Because, you know, again, you know why? Because it takes me back to when I had that same experience. And I remember leaving her house and I was like, very distinctly, I remember walking to my car and being like this, like, <laughs> it's real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're a wizard, Harry. Like, like, holy shit, it felt like having powers. Like, I, I just met, the, I didn't even know this person. I, I just, I, I don't even, I didn't even, I didn't spend three months getting to know her. I didn't meet her through work. I didn't meet her through a peer group, I just, some stranger. And now we're, we're doing this, I guess. It's fucking awesome.
right? So again, that's the experience that I want to give people on these programs, like the experience of doing things that they previously thought were impossible, because that's where the freedom is. The freedom comes in when you liberate yourself from a psychology that prevents you from getting what you deserve, right? From meeting the people you have chemistry with, from enjoying those relationships, from being able to go up and make shit happen, for having a sense of control where you see someone and you know you have a reasonable chance to go up and make it happen. And even if you don't, it's no big deal because you have abundance now, right? That's the experience that I want to give. I've been doing this for 20 years, okay? I am probably, not probably, literally one of the top five most experienced people at this in the fucking world. That is not even an exaggeration. Think about that. I've been doing this so long all over the world. Should we be applauding that? <laughs> like, get a job. I have a deep understanding of how to articulate these concepts and more importantly, how to transfer those skills to people. It's my passion, it's my calling, it's what I do. It's what I do, all right? So again, if you think that an association with me on that level would be beneficial to your life, I want you on the program. Don't be arrogant. Your time is valuable. Learn from professionals. I'd love to have you on these programs. They're super fun. That's, again, it's, it's a little intense sometimes, but I like there to be a sense of fun and enjoyment and creativity and play and fun, all of that stuff right? Exploration, free exploration. I want to create an environment to the best of my ability, free of judgment. So you can make that leap through fear into the unknown where all growth happens, right? I support you. I want to help you. I want to give you guidance after the fact as well. So you're never confused about this shit again. And you come to me in 10 years, like my, my good, my now good buddy did and said, I look at my life as before Jeffy and after Jeffy. That's the experience I want for you. I want you to send me a picture of your newborn child and say, thank you for this blessing. That's what I want for you. God bless you. God bless America. Yeah.